Howdy, Jason here, and today on the buildup of the 73 Mustang, I'm actually gonna do uh, one of those really practical and really cool upgrades that I think is gonna cross over to a lot of guys working on a lot of older cars. Now, I'm gonna take a stock style tank. This is the actual stock replacement tank that would go in this year Mustang, and I'm gonna convert it to an internal fuel pump that's capable of running either a carb or fuel injection. This is kind of a really neat thing, and so for those of you that are looking to upgrade your fuel system, and don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars, the in-tank fuel pump for this stock tank is only 235 bucks. I got it from Tanks Inc. And I ended up ordering all of this stuff from them. You know, I could have used the stock tank, but when I pulled the stock tank out of Old Large Marge, I found that there was just a lot of rust and I figured this tank right here from Tanks Inc. is 135 bucks. You know, that's just a really good peace of mind thing to replace. It's gonna be brand new. And especially when we're gonna about to do these modifications, it's kind of nice to have a tank that has not had fuel in it because if you're gonna be doing any cutting or welding to uh, your fuel tank, that's a really important thing to keep in mind. So safety be safe. Now, what I also ordered was a set of new straps here. We also have a new sending unit, the flange kit, the in-tank pump. It comes with this cool little baffle here that actually will act as a um, reservoir. So if you're doing any hard driving, this will actually hold a few seconds worth of fuel so you don't ever get fuel starved. And then you get your Walboro pump and all of the different fittings that you're going to need to pull this thing off. Now first up, you want to pick a spot where you want the pump and everything to be located. So now they recommend somewhere near the rear of the tank just because of, you know, it has a hard acceleration, fuel sloshes to the back. Now on this particular thing, that would be here or here since the fuel filler is here and that can't change. But I had an idea that since this tank comes with this little spot here for this vent, well, we don't need that anymore because our pickup has an actual vent opening for it. So now we want to do put our mount there. So check this out. On the trunk floor is already an indentation for or a clearance for the vent tube that used to go on the stock tank. So since we're going to go ahead and just replace that with all of our plumbing for the fuel pump and the vent line, we're golden. This is gonna be a great install. I'm really stoked to see if this works out as I think it's going to. And then the trick is to figure out a way to drill a four inch hole to insert that thing. So my idea is, is to just take a three inch hole saw, cut a piece, a little sacrificial piece to mount in there in place of our old vent, and then capture that, and then get our four inch hole saw and then that will drill us a perfect four inch hole around this little vent guy here. Now since this tank has this vent tube that used to go up for a vented gas cap, I'm gonna lose that as well. All I have to do is just clearance this and just take the edge off of that to be able to fit this thing in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so now the trick is to get the orientation of the baffle and reservoir. So you take your unit and you kind of get the how it's going to set in here and so you want to clock it so that the the tray, the pickup tray is sitting left right crosswise in the tank. And so I just went ahead and drew some lines here and then likewise I did a corresponding line on this trim this ring right here which is going to be the retaining ring inside the tank here. So now we could use this as a reference because we have to have a nice flat mounting surface here and because on the 71 to 73 we're lucky to have this raised area and this natural uh, clearance in the trunk floor for the tank but what we're, we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to dolly out this lip see we got a nice perfect flat spot here and here so we're just gonna dolly this entire area down a little bit so we just use this to get us the reference and you just go get a little hammer and we'll just dolly that smooth. Then what you do is you flip this over and by using this thing as my hole template. And now 
we'll go ahead and drill all of our 3 16 holes. Okay, so now that we have our holes kind of clearanced out, we have uh, everything clocked in the right direction. I went ahead and measured, let me show you how I did that. I just took a uh, square and a tape measure and once your flange, you get your flange kind of flattened out, you just measure down into the, the hole. And that gave me a measurement of nine and three eighths. And I went ahead and cut this thing to that. And it sits now perfectly in place and just off the floor. So that way when you mount your pickup tray in there, it, uh, It'll uh, just sit just off the floor and be able to, you know, capture enough fuel and never starve the pump. Now also, it's time to mount, now that we have this thing dialed, get this out of the way, you want to mount your capturing ring inside here. Now it's got this little split and I've went ahead and marked my spot here where I want to line it up so that way it clocks the pickup correctly. So. What I'm gonna do, there's multiple ways to mount this thing inside of your tank. Now what I'm gonna do, you could tape it, glue it. Um, one of the tricks, one of the other ways is to just weld it in place. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these mounting screws and put this thing into play and just put a few tack welds in here. I'll show you, it'll be pretty easy. All right, so we'll just put a couple of tacks in here. Now, of course, it's really important to remember right now that you're doing this on a tank that's safe to do this on. So it's up to you to make sure that your tank has not had gas in it or doesn't have fumes in it that's gonna blow up and kill you or the people around you. So. This was a brand new tank, and that's why I'm taking advantage of this uh, opportunity to just go ahead and uh, weld this thing into place. And then just take a few minutes to finish off the welds to make sure that your mounting surfaces are nice and flush. All right, next up is to clean out the inside of this thing, because we've just made a mess. There's metal shavings and it's all of the stuff, the last things that you want inside of your tank. So first up, now that we got this nice big hole here, we're gonna vacuum out as much as we can. Okay, so now that we've vacuumed and dumped all of the big stuff out of here, it's really important that the inside of your tank and the whole point of getting a new tank, uh, putting a new tank under this car, was to get all the junk out of there. So uh, the tank's ink instructions suggest throwing a little WD-40 and a magnet in there. And then you swish it around and any metal that might be left around in the nooks and crannies will all get sucked up in here. Check this out. And switch. So there you go, all the last little micro particles are all gone. So you're just giving yourself that last little bit of peace of mind there. Now it's time to put together the pump and pickup tray assembly. Since the fittings are NPT, use thread sealant on them and make sure to get everything aimed close to the right direction now. Then put the pre-filter and the sleeve on the pump and get it mounted to the arm so it sits just above the floor of the reservoir tray. Attach the fuel line from the pump to the fitting. Plug in the pre-wired harness. Then the fuel return line. And secure everything with the supplied zip ties. And you got yourself one handsome in-tank unit. All right, so now that we have our pristine gas tank clean and ready to go, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get it ready to go ahead and bolt our pickup and pump assembly into it. Now, I use this uh, Permatex high tack gasket sealant on this surface here. I've cleaned it up and we've flattened and dollied it in as smooth as we can, but what this will do is just give me that little bit of reassurance that I, I, I kind of would like 
that the gasket will get tacked down as best as possible. And if you're gonna use something like this, make sure that it's gas resistant. And we'll lay our gasket down. Now, we bring our entire pump and reservoir tray assembly in. Now remember, you marked what the front is towards the front of the cart. You slide it in like so. And then it should just mount right in. The holes line up. Everything looks good. Let's get some, uh, let's get some bolts in here. Let's, let's buzz this thing down. Now before you put all these bolts in here, Tanks recommends that you use a little bit of anti-seize or some sort of anti-seize compound on all of these things. So we'll put that on and get all of these threaded. Now carefully work your way around the mount to tighten all of the screws and pull everything together flush. Since I'm going with Dash 6 AN fittings and twist lock ends for my fuel lines, I installed the quarter inch NPT to Dash 6 adapters now, followed by the vent fitting with the rollover shutoff valve. All right, so now that I have all of the, the fittings and the, the nipples on the top here aligned in the direction, I think that's gonna work. Now I won't know for sure until I get the thing underneath the car and see if that little clearance in the floor, in the trunk pan will actually work, but I'm pretty sure that uh, this is going to do it for us. Let me turn this thing and I'll try to get a shot down inside the tank to show you exactly what we have going on set up inside your tank here. So you can kind of see how that works there. So it mounts to the roof there and then the sump and the pump picks up right out of this tray that sits in the bottom. Now that's a pretty cool view to be able to see this thing down there in its natural state getting ready to do some work. Now it's gonna be a good application for this car because it's a street car that's gonna see some pretty vigorous track day duties and that should fit the bill. Now, let me show you the last modification I had to make to get this thing in this position. Now this is the stock sending unit and fuel uh, pickup. What I did was I cut the fuel pickup off because we don't need it anymore and it actually interfered with the reservoir tray on this thing. So I just cut that off and then I did a slight bend to the float that will be the sending unit for the fuel gauge. And so I just made that bend so it moves, it misses the reservoir tank and I'll show you that install right now. First off, you gotta remember to get your flashlight back out of there. I almost forgot and left this in there. So step number one, get your flashlight back out of there. Making sure the O-ring is in position, just fit the sending unit into place and snug the capture ring. And that's it. Here's a quick shop tip on how to assemble twist lock hose end fittings. I put several pieces of tape on my vice jaws and use it to hold the fitting. Then I heat the tubing, apply a little Marvel Mystery Oil to both ends and vigorously push it on until it bottoms out against the skirt. And that's it. This is what the plumbing on the top of the fuel tank will look like when it's installed. I still have to wire the fuel pump, but I'll get to that later. Now, it's time for you to watch as I gracefully hoist this new tank into place and make sure the fittings clear the trunk floor. As you can see, the tank is a snug fit in here between the sway bar from the rear, the updated rear suspension and this cross member where the hangers mount to. What I'm gonna do, I'll have to make a clearance port for the fuel lines to come through right about there. And so that's it for the main part of the install for the Tank Sync in-tank pump. I really love the flexibility of this kit that I could have put that anywhere on the tank and us 71 to 73 Mustang guys have this really kind of convenient and trick spot where the old vent used to be to put that thing. So stay tuned for future videos as I finish the plumbing on this thing and get it ready to run. So until next time, enjoy your drive. I'm gonna find the next thing and get going on old large Marge here. Whoa.